Welcome to another segment of the Drexel SEMA show, where we encourage you to rise up and take your position. Now today we want to encourage you as usual, to inspire you, to celebrate your milestones. And sometimes you take your accomplishments for granted, especially if no one else, you know, really um, supports you or congratulates you or, you know, endorse you. And so we want to use this um, episode today for you to reflect on the things that you have done, things that you may even overlook. But I believe that everybody has something that they have done in their life that they could be proud about, that they could celebrate. And so we have a special guest who will lead us through this conversation about empowering your milestones. And sometimes you see these things are small, you think they're insignificant, but trust me, it's very significant. Everything you do is significant. So today it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Shelly Ford on my YouTube channel. It's the first time you're on the show, so welcome. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. So Shelly, before we get into our conversation, um, tell the viewers, I mean, about Shelly. Okay, so my name is Shelly Ford, and I was actually born in Guyana, but I came to Turks and Caicos when I was three or four years old, so this is my home this is all that i know i i do have fun going back and forth between this accent and my ti accent <laughs> and i did go to high school in north caicos so i always have a lot of fun <laughs> digging deep into my north caicos accent uh, a lot of my coworkers get a kick out of it oh, when, really? I, when i switch I, to my <laughs> you switch because you, you you talk consistently with me the same way i talk this way like probably 90 percent of the time oh, okay but you know i'm living in grand turk mm -hmm. now so everyone there is they're used to using their accent so when mm -hmm. we were joking around and having fun in the office here comes my accent and they're like which, which cake is island are you from, girl? <laughs> so, so, but um, living in the Turks and Caicos Islands, I've always loved it. Love going to the beaches. Love having just in, just soaking up the naturalness of our country. Mm -hmm. But I've always been ambitious, so I have a lot of accolades in in um, finance, in law. My Closest and dearest passion is compliance, yes. and mostly anti-money laundering compliance, regulatory compliance. Yes. And yeah, I just have a lot of different hobbies that I try to dig into as well. I'm a goofy person when you really get to know really? me. <laughs> yes, I try, I try not to let it show, but it comes out in interviews mm -hmm. and I'm like, am I gonna not get hired because I just cracked an inappropriate, Wait. weird joke? No, you just being yourself. But yeah, so I try my best to be myself, but I usually try to Gauge the environment before the weird, yeah. goofy Shelly comes out. That's okay. Just, okay. Just continue to be yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just be yourself. <laughs> you know, one thing I admire about you, I remember, this was a long time ago. You may not even remember this conversation. I don't know how this conversation came up and we were talking. But I, I don't know if I was talking. I, maybe I, it wasn't overheard. You, you say, one thing, I'm a Turks and Caicos Islander. And I was so, I was so, you know, I was so, Great to hear that because I was so pleased to hear yeah. that. Because you know, you know, some people they were not born here, their families from here, and they sometimes they say, Well, I am Guyanese, I'm Jamaican, but you said you're Turks and Kids Island, and I'm so glad to I'm so glad that I heard you say that. And, and yes. it makes me feel very, very good that you've assimilated into our culture and you you're part of us. Yes, I mean, uh, this is the only place that I that I know. Um, in regards to my heritage or where I grew mm -hmm. up. So I know a lot about Turks and Caicos history. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was small, someone asked me what Guyana was famous for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cow poop? Because when I was a little kid coming out the airport, there was cows everywhere. And that's the only thing I remembered as a little girl. Okay. But if you ask me things about Turks and Caicos, I actually met a couple the other day and they asked me questions. And they were like, wow, you have a wealth of knowledge about the mm -hmm. Turks and Caicos. I'm like, well... This, is, this home. is home. This, this is, is what home. I know. I have my contacts. I have my friends. I keep into the shadows, but I know what, where to go and who to yeah. go to when I need to get things done or need information. But Absolutely. yeah, I'm an islander. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think people want my life history the first time they meet me, so I mm -hmm. pick the one that I'm closest to. Right. So Turks and Caicos Islander when they start asking questions. Absolutely. 
Now, Shelly, prior to the, you know, the show, we were talking about, you know, the struggles people go through, the accomplishments people achieve, and they don't really, you know, even think about it sometimes. They don't mm-hmm. even, you know, appreciate themselves. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they focus so much on the negative things that people say about them. Um, what do you think we have to do in order to to overcome this? I mean, I know you probably went through some things and um, shed some light on that. What, what can we do to ensure that we celebrate our life, no matter how it may seem small to others? Yeah. I think it's very easy to focus on the negative in our lives, especially if we're going through something in that moment. We're surrounded by it. If it's a a boss that's not nice to us, a relationship that we're having struggles to get out of, if you're constantly faced with that negativity, it is so difficult to see the shining light in that in that moment. I think what's important to do, and the little tricks that you can do, mm-hmm. is writing out a list of the things that you're grateful for, ah. the things that you've accomplished. And it shouldn't be too many that it overshadows each and each single accomplishment. But like three to five things, mm-hmm. whether you're happy about the children that you have, you're thankful that the, the mother that you have in your life or the blessing that you have of a check mm-hmm. coming every single week that you know you can pay your bills with, whatever it is, whether it's small or big. And you start to realize as you make that list mm-hmm. and the next day when you look at that list again, you're like, oh, well, I have, a, I have another thing to be grateful for. And it's funny. After a while, that's all you see. At the end of the day, because you created this habitual habit of looking for the gratitude in your life, Ah. that all you see now is the gratitude in your life. That becomes part of your everyday life. It becomes part of your everyday life. So it it, it almost replaces all of the negative things that you're facing because all you're focusing on is the benefit of going through. Mm -hmm. So I remember there was a time I was in a difficult situation in, in an employment situation And I didn't know how to handle it. I I couldn't quit. There was nothing else I can do. And I started thinking, okay, but this is a good job opportunity. I am learning something here. I am giving value. So until I find another opportunity, I'm going to constantly focus on the benefit of having this job. And the other thing that you can always pay attention to is what can I do now Mm -hmm. that I can't do later when I'm out of this situation? So if you're single and you really want to be in a relationship, you can think, well, what are the things I can do now that I can't do when I'm in a relationship Mm. and find the joy in being by yourself? I like that. I like that. Yeah. So those are the little things that you try to do. Having a gratitude list and then being grateful that while I'm in this situation, what can I do now that when I'm out of this situation, I can't do Mm. later and cherish it while you're in it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the, the negative things appear so overwhelming, like it outweighs all the great things you do. So how, how are you able to just focus on documenting? Support. Uh, support. It really is about support. No man is an island. And even if you recognize that this is something that you can do, if you're in a situation where the people that you're surrounding yourself with are constantly negative towards you, and they don't even mean to do it. Think of a friend that makes a casual joke about a situation in a negative way. You laugh in the moment, but it carries with you when you go home that maybe I shouldn't try that new job because she said she don't think I can make it. And it it, it sets a negative tone. So it's about making sure that you have the right people surrounded, surrounding you that are going to continue to encourage you to focus on the positive. And it's, it's a difficult situation because if you had someone who's a best friend, and I've had that struggle of making a decision of whether or not this person who I've called my best friend for years is someone that should stay in my life. And I had a conversation with her. And I'm so thankful that I did without just cutting her off because she understood what she was doing that was impacting me mm-hmm. and made that adjustment a very slight adjustment. And you never realize the people in your circle, when you're very honest and open with them, the right people are going to want to make that adjustment because they don't want to lose you, Mm -hmm. which means they recognize the value in having you in their life. If someone doesn't recognize the value and doesn't want to make those adjustments not to lose you, do you really want to have that person Mm -hmm. in your life? And it's a very difficult thing. When you don't have enough people that you can surround yourself with, 
I'll be honest, I gravitate towards YouTube and I only look for those type of content that encourages me to focus on the positive. psych to go is a nice channel. I hope, um, I hope one of those YouTubers is, is the Drexel Seema show. I was about to say, because I know that there's a couple of, yeah. of topics that you've spoken yeah. on that's a good topic for yeah. a person to gravitate towards if yeah. they're trying to feel accomplished or recognize, yeah. wow, that person went through some, something much bigger than I did and they're still going on. Yeah. Maybe I can do that too. Yeah. So even if you're not surrounding your supporting system with physical human beings, right. it could be non-tangible people that you've never met that Absolutely. have gone through a struggle and are helping you. Self-help books. Mm -hmm. I, like, I have so, read so many self-help books because I recognize that this person has gone mm -hmm. through a different struggle. Yeah. A lady wrote a, a book, um, Bamboozled by Jesus, and I know you, had a, you have a book that came out recently. Mm -hmm. You should look for the type of books that encourage you and make you feel positive about yourself and encourage yourself to move forward. Yeah. Despite the 100 things that you're focused on that are negative, mm -hmm. focus on that one thing. Yeah. That one thing will become two things, become three things, and then you won't even remember the 100 things that you once claimed to yeah. be negative in your life. And do you think um, you need validation from other people to feel empowered? It's sometimes a very useful step. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of people will tell you, oh, you don't need nobody to tell you that you're good. You can do it on your own. But you have to remember we're not all the same. So while you may not need someone or I may not need someone to validate who I am or what I know, there is someone out there who needs that. Think of someone who's been subjective to negative talk all their life. No one has taken the, the, the step of making that person feel valued. If they don't know what it sounds like or what it feels like, it's going to be harder for them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes while you're looking at someone else, and I, I know I do this a lot with people I interact with, I'll say something simple. That's a nice shirt. Mm -hmm. Did she get a haircut? And they're like, wait, what? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it mm -hmm. looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns their day around. They actually yeah. have a couple of documentaries where people do that. They'll go around just making a nice compliment to a stranger. And I've even seen people cry, and it had nothing to do with them intrinsically. It was simply something outwardly that they saw. Yeah. And they cried, and they says, I had such a bad day, and now you're brightening my day. Like, you have no idea, and the lady started mm -hmm. crying. Because no one in her circle was doing that for mm -hmm. her. So, yes, you have to try to start within yourself. Because um, you can't expect someone else to recognize that for you. But the duality, the truth is, is that you should also have that from someone else. So just as much as I need to recognize in myself that mm. I'm valuable, I try my best to give that back to other people and tell them I see the value in them as well and encourage them to look within themselves and build that internally mm. also. But I agree with you. I mean, but we shouldn't depend on our life based on validation from people, though. No. You, you, you should. That, yeah, I agree right, with you on right. that. Because there are some people who just living their life, just waiting to be validated by people when, when oh. you know, from that angle, they would need to be focusing on being... No. But I love your, your points. Everybody no. needs some encouragement or some empowerment. I, yeah, I think sometimes what I'm... My point is, is that we should be looking to help validate others mm -hmm. because it we work in a community. Yeah. You know, a, a businessman can't have a business thrive if someone yeah. isn't going to his shop. Uh, exactly. So, so, so exactly. that is a validation in and of itself, right. buying... I got product you. every single week. I got you and I but I do you. agree that you shouldn't wait for that validation. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not getting the validation from the circle that you're in, you may need to make a shift. And I'll tell you, because I've done this, mm -hmm. they will either come with you or they will get lagged behind. Yeah. And it's not a burnt bridge. Still see them every now and again. Hey, how you doing? But they're not in my inner circle because they're Which not adding to yeah. value to my circle. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Now, you're still young, but based on your, um, your life, um, I assume that you, at some point in your life, you felt that you were not um, empowering yourself. And, and now you, you are. So ex walk us through that journey, how you was able to move from you know, not empowering yourself to now being empowered. So others can see, well, where do I start? I know you talk about the documentation. Mm -hmm. And you talk about that it was a very good idea to document all the yeah, positive write it down. things. Mm -hmm. But how, tell us about some of the things you went through and how you was able to overcome it. 
some of the things that I went through were I was surrounded by powerful people in different well, different ways you want to look at that, whether powerful by recognition or powerful by accomplishments. Or by money? Or by money. Okay. That's usually that's <laughs> often the case. And you go out with someone and they don't even look at the, the, the dollar sign on the corner. Or you go to a restaurant and there's no money value. And like, well, how do you know what to order unless you're picking the cheapest thing on the menu? And so you kind of start devaluing yourself. Yeah, right. And I know I was doing that because I had people that I graduated with and I would look at them and I'm like, wow, they're, you know, their title says this or they're, they're married with children or whatever I thought was mm. something to be considered of an, as an success. accomplishment okay. or a success. That's and good. I realized that I was constantly putting myself down. So you're comparing yourself to other people. Constantly comparing myself to other people. Not even thinking for a second about anything that I had accomplished. And I started to realize that I was gravitating myself towards people who were, for lack of a better phrase, narcissistic. And I was adding to their ego because I was like, wow, you're so accomplished. You you're look so up amazing. to them and you, and you made them feel. Yeah, and I'm, ah. I, like, I'm, I'm helping them accomplish things and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm working in the shadows. My day to shine will come. And... I think for me, I had to find it on my own. No one came to me and told me, hey, you're an awesome, amazing person. What happened was I wanted to become an amazing person. So I had a checklist of things that I thought I needed to accomplish in order to become this amazing person. So I started reaching out to people on LinkedIn, right? Uh, just connecting with, oh, telling this person, oh, you've accomplished so many things. How did you do this? And things of that nature. And so they asked me questions about myself. And I told them, oh, I did this, I did that. And some of the things I mentioned were very casual. And I'm like, yeah, I put on an event before. Like, I've done a couple of events on the islands. You know, and they said, well, who did you do it to? I said, an industry. Well, what do you mean by industry? I'm like, you know, the, the people in the business world or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, is that a region? I was like, no, the, the whole country mm -hmm. was invited. You did an event for the whole country? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Like, why are you shocked? Like, I don't understand. And after that phone call, I was like, oh, I'm already awesome. You know? That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so that moment of having someone who knew nothing about me, they, I think they were from the UK or something like that, and seeing that I had already accomplished things and I started writing out some of mm. my accomplishments, my mindset changed. Nice. And I started to feel bigger than I was. And realizing that, yeah, I'm not a showboater to say, but I have accomplished things. I, I have done things with my life and I, I, I can continue to pursue the things that I want to pursue. I'm still pursuing that checklist of things that put me in the box of an accomplished person, but I am already accomplished. So I think the thing that I would want people to get out of this mm -hmm. session, if nothing else, is in your pursuit of being this amazing person that you want to be, recognize the small accomplishments that you've had, whether it's on a monthly or yearly basis. I would, I would definitely say more frequently than a year. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, sit back and say, well, well what have I accomplished this year? Yeah. So something that I do is I'll write, a, I'll write a list, usually three to five things, and I'll say, so this is April that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, okay, in June 30th, I, I'm grateful and thankful that I've I've done a YouTube with Drexel Seymour. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful and thankful that something else that I want to accomplish, that I've written an article for the newspaper, whatever. And uh, I'll, by the end of those three months, I'll look back and say, okay, and I, I have that list up on a poster somewhere on my mirror, wherever. Mm -hmm. And every single day I'll look at it and I'll constantly be reminded that I need to do something towards this. Even if in June I haven't accomplished all those three things, I would recognize the stepping stones that I've done to get there. Hmm. Oh, well, I, I never talked to Drexel before, but now Drex and I hmm. were talking. Well, that's not true. I've known you for years. <laughs> no, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, I know what you mean. We ha I haven't had that YouTube show yet, yeah. but he and I are now mm -hmm. in contact with each other. So there are things that I haven't accomplished yet in the time frame that I've wanted, but I don't diminish my journey to those accomplishments. Hmm. And so I constantly feel empowered, I feel encouraged to continue because a lot of times when we didn't get to check off all those boxes at the end of the year with our list of resolutions mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, we feel devalued yeah. and we feel unaccomplished and then sometimes we even give up. Yeah. That's why it's really important that you, you try to make your achievements milestone based, something short. So if you have like a big goal for the end of the year, then set milestones mm -hmm. that are shorter throughout the year 
so you don't lose that that uh, steam, mm -hmm. that that motivation yeah. to keep going just speak. because you haven't done that big yeah. goal by the end of the year. Absolutely, I, I love it. You, that's that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Great information. Now, there are individuals who I, you mentioned earlier how mm -hmm. you were sort of comparing yourself and you you sort of beef up everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's a big that's a big issue actually worldwide where people are feeling that they haven't accomplished anything. They they are comparing themselves to other people. They are looking at other professions. Even the, even the profession they're in, they feel that their profession is not worthy. Um, they're looking at all these high color professions and mm -hmm. and but to me everybody is important. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to recognize that. And you can't be anybody else but you. Yes. And so you, you need to be focused. You know what it is that you want. And you go after it. Even if it appears is not a big thing. But it's a big thing. It is. It's a big thing. It is. You know? Definitely is. And I think that was one of the struggles that I had. Um, it was a situation where the people I was surrounding myself, those, those big names, oh. those, those big players, were verbally encouraging me but they weren't putting action towards that encouragement. Interesting. And I did not see it. Mm -hmm. And I had like something of a breakdown because I'm thinking, well, you know, I want to achieve this particular thing. You're saying that I'm an amazing person, that I can do this amazing thing, but you're, you're not putting your mm -hmm. money where your mouth is, so to speak. And not that I was looking for financial support, but they were not willing to help me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a deviation on my own and uh, you know, seek other employment with with another firm, and recognize that I always had to pay attention to lip service, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, and you and you have to look out for yourself. You have to look I mean, out for yourself. Of course, you want to help others as well. You want to inspire people. You want to help them along their journey. But you also must look out for yourself as well. Otherwise, yes. you're going to find yourself not doing anything for you. Right. Or you know what I mean. Or overly relying on this big name, yeah. thinking that they're the only, and they'll make you feel that way. They'll make you feel that I'm the only way that you can get that to your so success. True. And it may be difficult to get to your success using an alternative option, but there are always yeah. an alternative. Yeah. A there's, mountain can be gone over, gone through, gone mm -hmm. around. But there's more or, than one way. There's more than one way. Yeah. There's yeah. more than one way to mm -hmm. get to where you want to go, yeah. and you cannot allow someone. If you know what you're trying to achieve is right. It, it's, it's meant for you. The universe, God is telling you that this is for you. Who is this human, this mere human to tell you that he's wrong? That that gut feeling that you have of your next step That's it. shouldn't be achieved. Yeah. So I, I think that you have to always pay attention to that environment and question it and say, is this person coming from a place of love and encouragement or are they somewhat secretly keeping me back? Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, discouraging you from your success. They're not adding to your feeling of empowerment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where your sentence came back. You mm -hmm. don't wait for that person to validate you. No. You're amazing in your own right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what I also recommend people, you know, it may sound very simple, but every time they get up in the morning, just say, listen, I am somebody. I am important. You have to tell because people, a lot of people do not um, give you credit. It's true. A lot of people would rather spend a lot of time talking negative about you. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you appear to be successful, that jealousy spirit somehow will overtake people. Mm -hmm. And so you need to remind yourself that you are involved. You are yes. important. You are significant. And you need to remind yourself that nobody is better than you. Yes. And so, and if you remind yourself and, and it becomes part of your mind, you believe it, man, you will wake up every day looking forward to going to that destination that God has planned for you. Mm -hmm. you know? And you end up attracting the right people as well. That Absolutely. simple twist in your mindset from I'm not enough yeah. to I am more than enough. It, it's, it's so funny in these past two, three years, people have gravitated towards me. Like I'm almost like I need to take this magnet <laughs> off for a while you know? because people are just seeing something that I'm exuding that I didn't realize that I was putting out there because I'm now recognizing my own value mm -hmm. and I want to be able to give that back to the, to the people that I'm talking to, yeah. where they're in that position where I was a few years back, not recognizing how amazing you are. Mm -hmm. Just because you're not the CEO of a company, you're the or, assistant or, or have these titles, whatever title it is you have, 
People don't realize that if you leave tomorrow, you crumble your company, no matter how small your position is or how they make you feel your small your position is. So I think it's extremely important that I'm feeling this way that I that we put yeah. it out there so yeah. that you have people gravitating towards you and you don't discourage them from that. Yeah. And encourage them to continue on that journey as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to I think we need to stop focusing on on titles. Yes. I think there's too much focus on titles. You and accolades. Up, yeah, accolades. You're mm -hmm. going after these things and you end up going after these things just because you make you it makes you feel that you'll be considered a VIP or a significant. You don't you don't need to go after those titles and accolades. Go after something that you want or something part of your long-term goal yes you know what i mean mm -hmm. but there's too much focus on it way too much focus you know? on and, it and, and when you have these titles sometimes people in these titles in these positions also feel like they're better than you because they yep. even though they were not always in that position mm -hmm. they they started from where they are wherever they started from the go mm -hmm. there they got there but some of who get into these positions they feel they're so superior they completely forget their struggle yeah you know what I completely mean? forget. And I've, I've actually spoken to people who have said that they tried to talk to someone and the person dismissed them. And I'm like, but you, I know that person. I know you went through a similar struggle. Why would you not want to bring someone up with you? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I think that's, that's something that's impacting our community because we're not empowering each other and recognizing this, the, the value that each person has to bring. Because, okay, yes, you may look at someone and say, this person has an education. Mm -hmm. But then if I look at someone else and has, say, 10 years of experience in the same bucket, why would I dismiss that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I can tell you, graduating from whatever degrees that I had, I relied on the people who had 30 plus years of experience. Exactly. Exactly. What they say in the book doesn't apply exactly in, on, in, in mm -hmm. real life. You, you can't, you can't dismiss one over the other they both add their unique value yes. to a situation to a company to whatever it is that we're talking about yes well um shelly i just want to thank you for this, thank you for this opportunity for being on this show and very very inspiring uplifting encouraging um you have any closing remarks no i'm very grateful for this opportunity and one thing i hope that whoever is listening whether it's in our community or around the world that you recognize the little things that you've accomplished and celebrate it and make sure that the right people in your circle celebrate it also. And the last thing is to give it back. Yeah. Well, thank you. You've been watching the Draxel Seema show. Please remember to subscribe to the show. And I want to encourage you, you know, to don't take anything for granted. You know, you've been here in this world for a very, whatever, young, old. There are things that you have accomplished you might take it for granted that many people wish they had. And so I want you to reflect on a daily basis, the things that you have done. Don't say, oh, I haven't done anything. There is at least one thing that you have accomplished. Celebrate it, celebrate it. And don't focus too much on, in fact, don't focus at all on the disappointments. Don't focus at all on the negativity. If you're gonna focus on those things, the only focus you should do is to say, what can I learn? from these things. So empower yourself. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.